Hey there, good evening, Facebook. It's good to see you guys tonight. How you doing? Today is August 5th, Wednesday, August 5th. And you are in a place where, oh, every night at this time, um, we get together on this site uh, and we do a nightly devotion together. We check in with each other, see how everybody's doing. Uh, we share a little story. We read a little scripture, say a couple of prayers, and then say the nightly office from the Episcopal Church. Uh, my name is Mick. I'm a priest in the Episcopal Church. I serve two parishes here in Ludington, Michigan, which, by the way, if you've never been here before, you need to make a trip here. It's a beautiful place, and I'm so lucky to serve the parishes I serve. Uh, the first is Grace Episcopal Church, and the second is Emmanuel Lutheran. In this video tonight, we are going to talk about inclusivity. <laughs> It's a big word, meaning everybody's welcome. Okay. All right. Um, if this is your first time in the room, welcome. It's great to have you with us. Uh, my day, uh, let's see. It was very busy, actually. <laughs> it was very busy. Um, but a lot of good work was done. And um, got to talk to some people. And, um, well, I got to receive some pastoral care as well as give some pastoral care. And that's always a good day. So, tonight I am sharing with you. Chris Simpler asked me it, when he was going to see me um, drinking a yingling as the adult beverage of choice for the evening. For those of you who, kn who know, or maybe you don't know, I am from Pennsylvania. This is a favorite in Pennsylvania, brewed right in Pottsville. And it is America's oldest brewery, all right? And uh, oh, Yingling is available everywhere except right here in Michigan. I can't get it. I have to have it bootlegged in for me. And I have people who love me very much and want to see me happy. And they know that makes me happy. So <laughs> let's check in the room and see who is here already. Uh, well, Chris is the first one up here. Chris, it's good to see you. And um, your wife is probably right there with you, Jenna. Hi, guys. It's great to see you. From the Poconos. That's where they're currently living. Kelly Rivera is here from Houston. So the first two people we have here, we've got Pennsylvania and Texas representing. We've got Max Klein from right here in Ludington. We got my pops is here. Hey, Dad. Good to see you. And Chris says, greetings from, oh, Northeast PA. I was, I was reading NEPA. <laughs> Northeast Pennsylvania, celebrating our anniversary with a frozen pizza. Hey, happy anniversary, you two. That's awesome. Um, if I remember correctly, Jenna is from Michigan here. Uh, I believe in the Lansing area somewhere. And I don't know how long you guys have been married, but I know you spent... 10 years in Chicago, anyway. Um, <laughs> Chris says about sharing a yelling about freaking time. <laughs> hmm. Thank you. That makes me laugh. Uh, Kathy Iteen is here, which means Ben is probably right there next to her. And sometimes Ben is watching without Kathy, and he signs in under her. So I guess if he leaves a message or something, she gets blamed for it? I don't know. I don't know. He's a man of mystery, isn't he? <laughs> Darcy is here. Hey, Darcy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Looks like, oh, Chris is coming back out in September. And it looks like he's going to be taking care of me as well. Thank you, man. I appreciate that very, very much. And I look forward to seeing you. You and your wife as well. Kelly Rivera. Hi, all from Houston. Hey, Kelly. Hope you're doing well down there. It's been kind of cool here. It's never cool from what I understand in Houston. Not in the summertime. But... Man, I think in, last night it didn't even get out of the 50s. Um, in some places it dropped into the 40s. Kathy, I'm on the phone, but... <laughs> Kathy says, I'm on my phone, but can't hear you. Life is good. That's got to be from Ben right there. Okay, if you can't hear me and you're on your phone, try using another device. If you have your laptop or go back on the PC. Um and try it there. You may be able to get the sound. Debbie Milky is watching from Kalamazoo. Hey, Debbie. Good to see you. 
Uh, and Ginger, Ginger and Grayson are here from Portage. Hey, Grayson, good to see you, buddy. I hope you hope you've had a fantastic day, man. Thank you for being here. Hi. <laughs> Sheila Ray is here with us. Good evening. Good evening to you as well. D Falk is probably there with Kid Dynamite. Good to see you, D. Larry Reese is here uh, from right here from Ludington. Great to see you too. Uh, Kathy, try touching the screen again. Somebody is giving Kathy a um, either Kathy or Ben um, tr is trying to give them some clues as to how they might be able to get that sound in. Tracy Hughes is what Tracy Tracy for Aunt Tracy to my kids uh, is watching from New York. Good to see you, Priscilla Burns. And that means Mike is there, too. Yep. There you go. And Chris says 15 years are celebrating 15 years today. Happy anniversary. Congratulations. That's awesome. Joyce Uziak is here. Hey, Joyce you might have Jack right there with you. Good to see you. Ginger says, Kathy, try touching the screen. Oh, that's the one who said, try touching the screen. Uh, thank you for that, Ginger. Eileen Klein is watching. Good to see you, Eileen. Uh, Jack Conklin is there as well. Uh, let's see, Kathy. I, <laughs> I like it this way. Oh, that's got to be Ben. Come on. <laughs> Kathy's not mean, okay? <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys make me laugh. So, I want to tell you the story. Well, let me start by saying it this way. I love that I serve two churches that welcome people of both genders to serve in all capacities of the church. But I didn't always hold that opinion. Okay? Now, before before you send your cards and letters, just, hey, Sharon, good to see you. Uh, let me explain, okay? I am so lucky to serve both the Episcopal and the Lutheran Church. And we practice, um, communion is open to any baptized Christian, okay? It doesn't matter what denomination you're from. It doesn't matter if... It, you don't have to be an ELCA Lutheran in order to receive communion, or you don't have to be just an Episcop just an Episcopalian. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> communion is not served only to people of our denominations in our churches. If you're a member of the family, which means you belong to Christ, whatever you call yourself, you are welcome to receive Holy Communion. And I love that, that inclusivity. The next talk in the church is about open communion, meaning is it really necessary to have somebody baptized first before they receive the Blessed Sacrament? So that's a theological question for another day. I'm not going to tackle that today. But I am going to tell you about the first time I was ever in an Episcopal church, okay? Now, I was raised Roman Catholic, okay? And for a while, my family attended a Lutheran church, and Pastor Straw was our pastor, uh, Irv Straw, okay? And, well, the only people I knew in worship up front were all males, okay? Uh, especially in the Roman Catholic Church. I mean, the priests were all males. Um, women, if they wanted to serve in the church, well, if they wanted to take holy orders— not holy orders, if they want to, they could be monastics, they could be nuns, okay? They could join an order like that, but um, but they weren't really supposed to be up front, and even today, still in the Roman Catholic Church, males are priests. That's it. Women are starting to take more roles within the church, in the Roman church, but that was how I grew up. Okay, so Paula and I were looking for a church to get married in. I was a lapsed Roman Catholic. She was a lapsed bath, bath -like. <laughs> I was a lapsed Roman Catholic. She was a lapsed Baptist. And so we were looking for a church to get married in. And it, it, we both decided that it, it wasn't just going to be a church for a wedding. We were starting our family. We were, we were getting married. We, 
we wanted a church where the both of us would belong because faith and the community of church that we grew up in, it was important to us. We had just individually, both of us had stopped going years before. So the question came up, which church are we going to be married in? Because when I say her family's Baptist, I mean, Southern Baptist, okay? They don't really have a real high opinion of Roman Catholics, okay? And honestly, some people in my family, um, if, you don't ha if you don't receive the sacrament in the Roman church, then have you really received the sacrament? So that's kind of where we were coming from, and we needed to meet in the middle, and I had heard from my priest growing up, Father Pistoni, I had heard a story and remembered a story that he told about he and his brother accidentally going into an Episcopal church in New York. And he didn't know it, um, but some of the words, they were all there, but some of the words of the Mass were in a different location or a different order. Something was just, it was so close. And as they left the building, they looked at the sign on the door a little more closely, and it said the Episcopal Church. So I remembered that story from when I was growing up. Paul and I are looking for a place to get married, and we decided to check out the Episcopal churches in Battle Creek. Well, we went to the closest one to our house, which was Resurrection, Battle Creek. And um, I'm still very much in touch with some of the people there, and uh, my heart will always be there. But the very first Sunday we went in, it felt very orthodox to me going in I, I there were stations of the cross on the wall there were kneelers in the pews there was the umbre with the reserve sacrament the eucharistic light was there i smelled incense in the it, everything felt right and then the mass started and the priest that was in procession her name was mother Lorray rutenbar and it took me back i I honestly, I, I don't know what I expected. I, did, I certainly didn't expect a female priest. And that was the first one I'd ever seen. So immediately, I, th I think the hair went up on the back of my neck. And I, I, I don't know if I'm going to like this and blah, 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 blah. We, we, we stayed. And it wasn't within the first, uh, I would say, five to ten minutes that I completely... The words she was saying were the words of the Mass, the words of the liturgy, the order of Mass that I had that I had grown up with, that I knew that it was very comfortable to me, the reverence of, of the altar. All of a sudden, it did not matter to me whatsoever the gender of the person who was saying the words. She was a duly ordained priest, and we were saying Mass. Yes, I am high Anglo-Catholic, okay? That is my nature. So, so all the, the ritual that has meaning to me was all right there. Now, later on, Lorray would become a good friend to me and to my family. Um, we went back the next week and the next week and the next week. And Paula and I did join the Episcopal Church. There's other parts of that story, and as time goes on, I'll share that, those parts with you. But for right now, I just want you to know, you know, I am happy to serve in a church. Not that I'm not going to throw stones at anybody else's church who reads Scripture a certain way, and that's their understanding that um, only men are to be up front. I understand where it's coming from, and I'm just saying for me, my own personal journey, um, that's where I'm at, okay? All right. So Alicia Miller is watching too. Hey, Alicia, good to see you. Uh, Alicia um, took a job on the other side of the state, so she is in, in Michigan here, just not here in Ludington anymore, and we miss you terribly. Um, congratulations on your family growing, and we, we pray for you guys. Uh, so if you have your Bibles with you and you want to 
read scripture right along. You can. We're in the Gospel of Matthew tonight in the 15th chapter, and we're starting at the 32nd verse. If you do not have your Bibles with you, don't worry about it. Let me read it to you, okay? It's called More Than 4,000 Fed. Jesus called his followers to him and said, I feel sorry for these people because they have already been with me three days and they have nothing to eat. I don't want to send them away hungry. They might faint while going home. His followers asked him, How can we get enough bread to feed all these people? We are far away from any town. Jesus asked, How many loaves of bread do you have? They answered, Seven and a few small fish. Jesus told the people to sit on the ground. He took the seven loaves of bread and the fish and gave thanks to God. Then he divided the food and gave it to his followers, and they gave it to the people. All the people ate and were satisfied. Then his followers filled seven baskets with the leftover pieces of food. There were about 4,000 men who ate, besides women and children. After sending the people home, Jesus got into the boat and went to the area of Magda, Mag, Magadan. Hmm. I was about ready to say Magdala, but this definitely says Magadan. Okay. Well, that is the New Century Version um, interpretation, okay? So right about now, you're saying, okay, you gave a story about inclusivity, and you just read a story about the feeding of, in this case, the 4,000. The devotion writer writes, When my husband and I joined the church in Seattle suburb, I was impressed by the congregation's inclusivity. Any baptized and confirmed member, regardless of age or gender, could vote at congregational meetings and was welcome to help with the worship service as an usher, assisting minister, or a communion server. What's more, we had women pastors, something completely new to me, as I grew up in a church where women could have no formal role in worship. While I was teaching Sunday school, the focus of one lesson was on Jesus' miracle of using so little food to feed such a large crowd, 4,000. But that number only accounted for the men. Jesus performed another blessing. In a patriarchal society, Jesus had compassion for and served women and children too. The gospel reveals the inclusive nature of Jesus' ministry. All are welcome, and his compassion extends to all. And the prayer for tonight is, Jesus, our Savior, help us spread the good news of inclus inclusiveness of your kingdom. Amen. And the prayer concern is for people who feel excluded. Okay, I'll go along with you. I think it's a, a little bit of a stretch to bring a message of inclusivity out of that reading, but that's where the devotion took us tonight. Okay? All right. Guys, I am going. we're starting on the prayer list tonight, and the first thing I want to start off with is a personal request. Um, my mom went in the hospital yesterday. So I'm asking for your prayers for Francis um, and for my pops, um, as he has been the, the sole caregiver to my mom um, for a while now. And it's hard at this time to, well, as you all can imagine, okay? Um, so prayers for healing for my mom and prayers for... Um, that my father pays attention to his own self-care, too. And, uh, well, thank you for keeping my family in your prayers. Michael Tadabito is here from New York. Good to see you, Michael. And Kelly Marie is here, right here from Ludington. Good to see you guys, too. Good to see you. Okay, so we're picking up where we left off last night. Um, we're still praying for Kim's friend, Veda, who went into the hospital yesterday. Um, let me see. Where else are we? I guess we're down to here. Oh, we're here. For Sharon. Sharon has asked us for prayers for Bob and Julie. And Kelly, for your sons, Adam and Christopher. Priscilla, for Jay and Nate and their new daughter, Elizabeth. And continued prayers for Nate's mom, Tonya. Amanda, for your grandpa, Charlie, as he continues to recover. Jim. 
Thank you, Sheila. Jim, you've asked us for prayers for Woody. And of course, we join you in praying for him. Gene, my friend, as he continues to, my Marine friend, uh, who continues to recover from his surgery, and both of his children, too, who had surgeries, and they're all recovering. And Miss Barbara, thank you for introducing us to Dr. Yardumian. And we pray for him and his staff as they treat patients right here at St. John's in Gross Point and Madison Heights. And that's where we're going to stop for tonight. We'll pick it up there tomorrow. Now we turn to the nightly office. And we're going, and the, the last office of the day in the Episcopal tradition is called Compline. The opening sentence is called the Invitatory. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Psalm 134. Behold, now bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. And the lesson for tonight is taken from 1 Peter. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for some, someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. And in the words our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the collect, visit this place, O Lord, and drive far from it all snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace, and let your blessing be upon us always. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And the canticle is the song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And for those who will be joining first thing in the morning, uh, thank you, Vicki. Vicki Oaks is with us tonight, too. It's good to see you. A prayer for those using this devotion or this broadcast for your morning devotion. Holy Father, thank you for loving me for walking with me and caring about my, the smallest details of my life. Fill me with grace, Lord, that I may have the strength to face what is before me today. I know not what today will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. Please give me your wisdom and fill me with your peace. May I show the same grace, Lord, to others that you show to me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And now... May the almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you this night and always. Amen and amen. Last thing I want to say before I get off here tonight. Um, hi, Joan. Joan Cayley is with us. Good to see you. Please don't think that I was throwing stones at anybody else's denomination or anybody else's church for the, the way that they, well, the, the regulation or the regulations, the, um, the rules that they go by on how they read scripture, anything like that. That was not my intent at all. Never. I, it could never be. The Roman church is my mother church. It, it's, it's why I had such a hard time understanding when I came and started serving a Lutheran church, when we, when we started, um, celebrating Celebrating might be a hard word. Celebrating uh, Reformation Sunday. Um, that, that, that was totally foreign to me because I, I saw or I was raised as the, 
Reformation was the day that we could no longer get along with Mother Church, and and that is a divorce. That is, and and our prayers are that someday we'll be reunited again. Um, so if you thought that I was casting any stones at anybody else, Roman Catholic, Protestant, Baptist, what? No, no, please do not get that idea. Hmm. Farthest thing from it. One day we'll all be together again. You'll see. <laughs> I have it on pretty good authority. Well, that brings us to the end of our time together. I hope that you have a beautiful night and a beautiful tomorrow. Be well, be safe, love each other, love God with all your heart. And as my pop says, good Lord willing, crick don't rise. See y'all right here tomorrow night. Good night, Facebook.